Hello again. Wow, we're up to number three now. We're starting to get into uh, some of the, the more useful areas of programming. So, um, so far we have looked at different data types. We have looked at input and we have looked at output and we've looked at some of the things that you need to do to ensure that you don't get errors when you are outputting like converting between different data types. Okay, what we're going to have a look at today is one of the more powerful aspects of programming. It's conditions, okay? It's the ability to make decisions and do different things based on uh, different inputs, okay? But before we get into that, at the end of the last uh, video, I gave you a mission. I gave you a mission to create a program which would ask the user to enter the radius of a circle. It would then calculate the area of that circle. It would calculate the circumference of that circle. It would calculate the volume of a sphere with that same radius and it would calculate the surface area of um, that same sphere. I then said if you wanted to do something extra you could also ask the user to enter um, the length of a rectangle and the width of a rectangle and then calculate the area of said rectangle. So hopefully you've written some code which should work um, and if you've done it using the uh, uh, the methods that I've uh, taught in the last couple of videos you should have something that looks kind of like this. Okay so We've got radius equals float input. What is the radius of your circle? Okay. Uh, pi equals 3.14159. Now you'll notice I have used all capital letters for pi here. Uh, in Python, it's a convention to use all capitals if you are defining a constant value. Okay. Pi never changes. Therefore, it is constant. So we give it all capital letters. I've then said area equals pi times radius squared, circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius, volume equals 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed, surface equals 4 times pi times radius squared. Okay, you should have been able to find those um, uh, formulas, formulas, formulae, formulae, whatever the plural of formula is, uh, on the internet. Um, and then all you've got to do once you've calculated those different uh, answers is print them out. So print the area of a circle with radius and then we are converting the radius to a string um, and we are also converting the area to a string. Basically these four output lines are basically the same thing but we're replacing area with circumference, volume and surface. Okay. After we've done that, a couple more input lines Okay, uh, length equals float input, what is the length of your rectangle? Width equals float input, what is the width? And then area equals length times width. And then finally print the area of a rectangle with length, length and width, width is area. Okay, so if I run that, let's have a look here. What is the radius of our circle? Let's say it's, I don't know, 63.6 maybe. Um, it's instantly calculated all of that stuff for us. So I know that the area is 12,707.60588, blah, 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 all of that. Uh, the circumference is 399.6102. Um, the volume of a sphere with that radius is yada, yada, yada. Uh, if you plug in uh, your value uh, as 63.6, uh, as long as you've used the same value for pi, you should get the same answers as I do here. So if I was to put in, I don't know, something more conservative like 15. Oh, no, I can't do that yet because I haven't finished running the program. Um, if you put in those, you should get that. So uh, length of a rectangle, let's say 12, and the width of a rectangle, 2. This should give me the output 24. And... There it is, okay, the area of a rectangle with length 12 and width 2 is 24. Now you'll notice that there's the point zero on the end here. That's because I converted to a float and not an int. And if you remember, floats always have the decimal point even if they are whole numbers. So, if you got that right, give yourself a pat on the back. If you got it almost right, then just maybe make a note of the, the areas where you tripped up, which bits went wrong, um, 
and use this code here uh, to help you uh, get it up and running. Okay, you can pause the video and you can you can copy the code down there. Okay, but for now. I'm going to delete all of that. No, actually, I'm going to create a new file. Okay, I'll keep that in my in my file. I'm going to create a new file. So Alt and Insert, and I'm going to select Python file. Okay, and I'm going to call this Conditions. Okay, because that is what we are looking at. Okay, I want to create a program which asks the user for some input, and then based on that input, it does something different. Okay, so First of all, I'm going to ask the user to enter their name. What I want you to do now is pause the video and write a program which asks the user for their name and then outputs hello and then their name. Okay, This is nothing we haven't done before. You should be able to do it in a couple of seconds. So pause the video. And now we're back. So we should have something like uh, name equals input. Uh, you know, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can actually see what's going on there. Uh, name equals input. Uh, what is your name? There we go. Um, and then I'm going to say print. Uh, hello. Uh, name. Okay. We've done that before. Now, when I run the program, uh, now if be careful here if you just click play it's going to run that old program we don't want to do that okay so control shift f10 remember control shift f10 boom okay what have we got here what is your name my name is mephistopheles okay mephistopheles um hello mephistopheles brilliant okay rock and roll now what i want to do is i want to uh print out hello mephistopheles but if the user has the same name as me or my computer or whatever, um, I want it to print out, wow, that's my name as well. Okay, so we've got to get the computer to check what the user has entered for their name before we output something. And the way that we do that is by using an if statement. Okay, so we are going to say if, if name equals let's say Eris my computer is called Eris so if the user enters Eris we want to uh, print out um, uh, wow that's my name too okay and then just at the end we're going to print out hello name okay now very important point to notice here there are two equal signs there. When we are comparing something with an if statement, we have to have two equal signs. Okay? If you put one equal sign, you will get an error message. Okay? Now, all of you will forget this at some point. You will put a single equal sign. Your code will not run. And then when you work out what's gone wrong, you will realize that you only put a single equal sign in there. Even I still do it sometimes. Okay? Two equal signs when you are comparing because a single equal sign is the assignment operator. Okay? Two equal signs is the comparison operator. Very, very important point. Let's have a look what else is going on here because there's something a little bit weird about the way our code is laid out here. Okay, we've said if name equals Eris. Okay, and then I've got a colon, and now the next line is indented. Okay, any lines that are indented become part of what's known as a code block. Okay, we'll be looking at lots of different. Um, statements which require code blocks, but for now the if statement is um, is is the thing that we're interested in. Okay, so what this means is, if this statement here is true, so if name equals Eris, it's going to execute all of the lines of code which are indented. If it's not true, it's going to skip over all of the indented lines of code and just drop down here. Okay, so when I run my code here, what is your name? If I type in Carl, which is my real name, it just says hello Carl. Okay? Because I haven't typed in Eris, it has skipped over this line of code and it's just output um, hello Carl. OK? 
Okay, but if I run it again and I type in my name as Eris, it says, wow, that's my name too. And then it's printed out, hello, Eris. So because I typed in Eris, it's compared what I typed in with this thing that I've mentioned here and it's found it to be equal and so it's executed all of the code which is indented. Now there's only one line of code here indented but I could add another line of code like this for instance. Okay, When I run this now same deal applies if I type in Eris you see Wow, that's my name too. How awesome is that? Okay, but if I was to uh, type in anything else, uh, let's say, I don't know, Hercules, um, it just says hello, Hercules. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many lines of code you've got in there. Okay, if this condition is not met, anything that's indented will be skipped over. Okay, now important points to remember here you have to have a colon in there. If you forget the colon, this is what happens when I run my code here we've got a syntax error invalid syntax if you ever get this if you get this error message on an if statement and there's this little carrot here pointing at the end and there's no colon that's where you've gone wrong okay if statements have to have a colon another error that happens all the time is this you have an if statement and then you don't indent the code Okay, it says indentation error expected an indented block. After a colon, you've got to have an indented code block. Okay, cool. What I want you to do now, pause the video, type out this code. Obviously, you can change the conditions here. Okay, so change it to your name uh, and then see if you can get your uh, program up and running. Okay. Right, now that we're back, we're going to have a, a look at what other comparisons we can do. So we can check to see if something's equal, but we can also check to see um, whether a value is greater than or less than. So for instance, I might ask the user to enter their age. Okay, What I want you to do is just after this code here, I want you to ask the user to enter their age. Convert their age to an integer. Okay, You can do that all on one line or you can do it on two separate lines, but try it now. Okay, So pause the video and now we're back. We should have something like age equals int input uh, what is your age? Okay, just gonna add a question mark up there because that's bothering me. Okay, so we've asked the user what their age is. Now we're going to say if the age that they have typed in is less than I don't know 500. Um, no, we won't say 500. Let's have a reasonable age. We say less than 50. Uh, we're going to say, oh, you've still got plenty of time left to live. Uh, if it's more than 50, uh, we'll, we'll do something else, but we'll get, we'll get to that point. Okay, so we're going to say if age is less than, so that symbol there means less than, is less than 50. Okay, we've got to have the colon and we've got to have an indented block. We are then going to print out, uh, you still have some way to go. Okay. If I run this code now, uh, what is your name? Oh, look, I, I didn't even... I, how can I not type a question mark? How bizarre. Okay, so what is my name? Uh, let's say my name is Grendel. There we go. Uh, hello, Grendel. What is your age? If I say 100, it's going to skip over that last line and it's just going to exit. Okay, let's run the program again. Uh, what is your name? It's still Grendel. Uh, hello Grendel, what is your age? Let's say my, my age is 38. Um, you still have some way to go. Okay, so it's compared the age that we typed in here to this value here. If it's less than, it's going to uh, print out uh, you still have some way to go. Okay, now the more than symbol, greater than, is like that. Okay, so less than is that. Yeah, see what's changing here? Greater than is that. Okay, so 
what I want you to do now is just after this line I want you to create another if statement which checks to see if the age is greater than 50 and print out some other message like man you old or something like that okay so pause the video type in that um, command and then let's have a look at what we've got you should have something like this if age is greater than 50 print man you old okay like this okay so now I run the program what's my name uh, what is my name let's say it's uh, Ulysses Ulysses uh, hello Ulysses what is your age my age is 76 okay man you old okay so it's checked to see if my age is less than 50 it's not less than 50 so I skip over this line here okay and then it's checking this line here age is greater than 50 it's going to print out man you old okay now that works but it's not the best way of doing things okay if we are checking the same thing and there are multiple different outcomes based on that same thing okay we can use an elif statement okay elif that's short for else if okay so what that means is we first check this statement if the age is less than 50 we're going to print this out if it's not less than 50 then we're going to check this statement okay and then we're going to print that out okay it's a very subtle difference but it's a significant one and I'll explain why in just a sec okay so if I run that code it should be exactly the same what is your name uh, let's say well, I don't know um, yogurt that's a name, right? Yogurt. Hello, Yogurt. What is your age? I'm going to say um, 120. Okay. It is still it's still functioning in exactly the same way. Okay. Now, you will notice here. We're checking to see if age is less than 50. We're checking to see if age is greater than 50. But what happens if I type in 50 as my age? Okay. Let's run this. What is your name? Um, Ursula. Uh, that'll do. Uh, what is your age? Okay, I say my age is 50. It hasn't printed anything out. Okay, because 50 is not less than 50, 50 is also not greater than 50. Okay, but we can have an else statement on the end. Else will run the code block that's in here if none of the previous conditions are met okay uh, so we're gonna say uh, I guess you must be 50 okay so let's have a look at what's going on here right if age is less than 50 we're gonna print this out okay now if age is less than 50 it means we skip over we do this and then we skip over all of this we don't even bother checking this stuff we just skip over and then we are we're done okay if however age is not less than 50 then we move down to the next thing that we check okay if age is greater than 50 we're going to print this out okay now if age is not greater than 50 we reach this point now if we get to this point and none of the previous conditions have been met we have to execute this code here okay so when I run this code now what is your name uh, my name is Jackie okay uh, what is your age if I say 50 I guess you must be 50 we've checked here 50 is not less than 50 okay so we skip over that bit we now check here 50 is not greater than 50 so we skip over this bit and then finally we execute this line of code here okay so the way that these statements work you can have a single if statement okay it checks it at the point where we reach that okay and then it will if the statement is met it will execute this code block okay if it's not it skips over it and it carries on moving through the program if we have multiple different options yeah, so with this first one, we've got if name equals Eris, it either does that or it doesn't. 
okay but with this one there's three different things that could happen either you're less than 50 or you're older than 50 or you're exactly 50 and those are the three things that can happen now you can have as many elifs as you want you can only ever have one else okay and if you have an else else needs to be the last thing in the um, in the if statement okay so um, what I'm going to do here I'm just going to modify this here okay I tell you what no I'm gonna get you guys to modify it so up here we are going to I will put the I'll put that code back so you can refer to it I want you to modify this if statement here so it's checking to see if name equals Eris and if it is it's going to print out this I want you to check then to see if name equals um, Bob and if it does print out my dad's name is Bob okay and then get it to print out um, uh, if the name is um, Alice uh, you can print out I knew someone called Alice once or something like that okay and then if it's none of those things uh, then get it to print out um, okay hello whatever your name is okay so if the name is Eris it's gonna print out wow that's my name too how awesome is that if the name is Bob it's gonna print out uh, my dad's called Bob if the name is Alice it's going to print out uh, I once knew someone called Alice and uh, if it's none of those things it's just going to print out hello uh, name okay so pause the video try and do that and we should be back now so you should have something like this okay we've got if name equals er Eris uh, do all of that stuff Elif name equals Bob we are going to print print uh, my dad's name is Bob okay Elif name equals Alice print I once knew someone someone called Alice else um, then we are going to print hello name okay so when I run this code now I'm finally going to change that to a question mark as well so when I run this code if I put in my name as Alice I once knew someone called Alice okay and I'm gonna say uh, my name my age is I don't know 12 okay you start somewhere to go let's run it again let's just double check if I type in my name as Bob my dad's name is Bob okay so it's obviously it knows that we're not called Eris so it skipped over that and then it's checked to see if the name is Bob and it's printed this out okay but you'll notice it hasn't printed out hello name because it only gets to that point if none of these previous conditions are met okay so what is your age let's say it's 50 I guess you must be 50 yes of course we are okay and then finally uh, what is your name um, let's say it's John okay it's gonna check here uh, the name John is not Eris so it's gonna skip over that it's going to check here uh, John is not Bob so it's going to skip over that John is not Alice so it's going to skip over that we're finally up here it doesn't need to check anything it's just got to this point if we get to this point and we haven't executed any of these we're going to skip uh, we're going to execute this line of code here so when I oops I was supposed to type in John uh, John there we go hello John okay um, cool um, yeah that's that's it um, there's a couple of things that you can do uh, with number comparisons okay so at the moment we've done we've checked to see if something is equal to something we've checked to see if something is less than something we've checked to see if something is greater than something so I could check to see if age is less than or equal to 50 here 
okay if I put the equal on there it will check to see if it's less than or equal to it so that will be anything below 50 and also including 50 which means that now we will never get to this point here okay so when I run my code if I type in uh, let's say my name is Donald okay hello Donald what is your age if I type in 50 previously what's happened is it skipped past that and it's got to the point I guess you must be 50 okay but now we're checking to see if the age is less than or equal to 50 when I run that you can see oh, I keep on running it and I should just type in Donald okay uh, what is your age if I type in 50 you still have some way to go it says okay it never gets to this point here okay other things that you could do, I'm going to completely alter this now. Um, if I do this, okay, I've put an exclamation mark before the equals. Okay, that means not equal to. So when I run this now, uh, what is your name? Uh, let's say it's Bernie. Okay, hello Bernie, what is your age? If I put in any number that is not 50, it says you're not 50. Okay, but if I put in 50, um, let's say Hodor, um, if I put in 50, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so just as a reminder, that means uh, less than. That means greater than, uh, that means equal to, that means uh, not equal to. I should make this actually visible for you here. There we go. Um, that means less than or equal, uh, and that means greater than or equal. Okay? Those are the different values that you need to know when you are comparing things. Okay. Now, there are some more advanced comparisons that we can do here. Okay. So, let's pretend for a moment that my computer is, I don't know, uh, 50 years old. Okay. Down here, I am going to check to see if the user has typed in the name Eris and they have typed in age as 50 okay so if I say if name equals Eris and age equals 50 okay I'm gonna print out are you sure you're not me Okay, so what's this checking? It's checking to see if the name is Eris and the age is 50. It's checking those two things. If they are both true, if both of those conditions are met, it's going to execute this. Okay, I'm also going to have another condition in there. I'm going to say elif name uh, equals Bob or uh, name equals Alice we are going to print um, uh, I don't know what what should we say about Bob or Alice um, I like your made up name okay so here this is checking to see if both of these are true. This is checking to see if either of them are true. So if I've typed in my name as Bob, it's going to print this out. But if I've typed in my name as Alice, it's also going to print this out. Okay? We can use and, we can use or. Okay? So let's run our code. What is your name? First of all, we're going to try this first one. So I'm going to type in Eris. Okay? Wow, that's my name too. How awesome is that? What is your age? I'm going to say 50. Are you sure you're not me? Okay, we've gone through here. 
it's detected our name is Eris. We've printed out, uh, wow, that's my name too. We've printed out how awesome is that. Down here, okay, we've got, um, we've checked to see what our age is. Our age is 50 and the name was Eris, so we've printed this stuff out. Okay, now if I type in uh, what is your name and I say Eris and I type in my name as 23, it's not going to print anything out, okay, because both of these conditions need to be met to meet this and neither of these conditions are met so we just skip to the end okay I want you to pause the video and have a play around with some of the different uh, combinations uh, in there until you are familiar with how all of this is working okay now if you are still with me I have an assignment for you for next time. Okay, I want you to create a program which asks 10 questions with multiple choice answers. Okay, so as an example, I could say, um, uh, let's say answer one, I'll just put answer equals input. Um, uh, where is the Eiffel actually it's probably better if I just print this out so I'm going to say print where is the Eiffel Tower okay um, I'm going to print out a Paris uh, I'm going to put a new line. B, um, London, uh, and a new line. And C, um, Dakar. I don't know if that's how you spell Dakar, but there we go. Um, okay, and then I'm going to say answer equals input. Um, and I'm just going to put a question mark there um, so they can answer there. So when I run this now you can see where is the Eiffel Tower? Is it A Paris, B London or C Dakar? Okay I'm just going to type in either A or B or C. Okay now at the moment it doesn't do anything. Okay that's where I want you to come in. I want you to write some code which checks to see what they have typed in. If they've typed in A obviously they've got the question right so you should um, tell them that they've got it right and award them a point okay so maybe you should create a variable called score and we'll start off score as zero that should go at the top really okay if they've typed in B or C then you say no that's not right okay I want you to create a quiz program that asks 10 questions multiple choice questions Okay, tells the user whether they've got the uh, uh, answers right or wrong and keeps track of their score. At the end, I want it to uh, tell them what their score is. And as a bonus, if you could get them to tell, uh, get the program to tell them what percentage of answers uh, they got correct, um, then do that as well. You have all the skills that you need to do this. Okay, you know about input, you know about output, you know about um, conditions, checking to see if um, checking to see what the user has typed in. Um, all you need to do is find out some questions, okay, and get that output down. Next time, we'll have a look at what you've got. You, we'll compare it to to my answers. You can see if it works. Okay. In the meantime, if you get stuck, if you have any questions. Uh, you can email me, uh, you can leave a comment, um, or you can post on the Google Classroom, and uh, we'll see where we end up next time. Thank you very much for watching, everybody.